Junk PSA slabs, a new Fnatic CEO, and some really dodgy news coming from Mark's cards. That's actually new information, so pretty scary. Let's get into this week's news video. Now, the first thing I want to touch on is the Junk Slab error. Now, this is something that's been thrown around for, you know, the last 18 months, 12 months at the very least. And it talks about how this, this backlog out at PSA essentially stemmed from people sending in, you know, shitty cards to try and make a quick buck when the hobby was booming. And... What's pretty funny here is Card Porn have shared a video from Santiago Sports, who does a lot of vlogs, a lot of buyings at two stores or three stores, if I recall, in the States. And in this video, he picked up a 150 PSA slab lot from a customer. And in the video, I'll, I'll put the link down below. You can, I won't play now, I'll play some of it now. But basically in the video, he's basically talking to the people saying, you know, everyone quick, everyone grab a slab, let's see who can find the best card, right? And they're all, the, all the cards are absolutely shit. Like crappy grades, they're crappy 90s, not even insert cards, they're just crappy 90, 90s base cards. You got random matchbox and hot wheels or whatever it is cards i think you're about to see it now but they've all got like really crap grades and it's like okay the backlog didn't just come from people submitting base cards from modern sets it was it was shitty cards from the 90s as well which i knew to an extent but not to this level and it's just crazy how they're not even getting good grades they're all getting low grades and it just shows that people have no idea what they're doing and when i've touched on this in the past i've spoken about how you know i feel a bit sorry for the people that have submitted cards that got burned by PSA, but people that submitted these cards don't really feel sorry for you because it's like, what were you thinking? Like, they're not even in good condition. So why did you send them in? And you've paid an arm and a leg to get those things graded. What, what did you think was going to happen? It's very different if you're, like maybe you PC Hot Wheels, okay? And you, you want that card in the slab and you put it on your shop. That's pretty cool. Pay, the, pay That's fine to do that. But if you're somebody like this person where they just found all their old cards they had as a kid in a cupboard and they chucked it into PSA, you got what you you got what you deserved to, to an extent, right? Like, what do you think was going to happen? And it's just crazy that this has sort of put the hobby on the back foot with regards to the backlog. It shifted prices up. It's caused so many issues because idiots like the people that submitted these cards. And not, I'm not, Santiago Sports is not the idiot, right? The person who he bought these from, if they were the person who submitted, they're an idiot because it's like, what, were you, what, what did you think was going to happen? They've ruined it for most people. And like, it's good if you're a collector now because you can buy, like, if you do like Hot Wheels, you can buy these slabs for a couple bucks, two, three, four bucks. I, I don't imagine it's going to sell for anything more than that. Maybe it might even be less. It might be dollar slabs. Who knows? We're, we're, I think we're going to be entering the point where you might start seeing dollar slabs or 50 cent slabs because, you know, people that paid the money to get them graded have, you know, opted out and they've sold it on to someone else. And Scientific Sports doesn't care what they sell for, essentially. Like, if you can get a buck for a slab, if you paid less or you didn't pay too much to get them, sell them for a dollar each. It's good if you're a collector because if there's some things in there that you like or you PC a certain player from the 90s, why wouldn't you pay a buck to get something in a slab, All right? It's just, it's just crazy how, you know, idiots like this have essentially ruined it for us in the hobby where they've just got crap things sent in that are freaking worthless and of course this huge backlog. It's just crazy. So let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. Now, the other interesting news from this week is that we've got a new CEO out at Fanatics. Josh Luber is now the chief vision officer. As um, Kai Point have said, yes, you've read that correctly, he's the new chief vision officer, which I think is a bit funny because, you know, vision is meant to be, you know, thinking for the future, doing the right things by the hobby and things like that. And his vision hasn't appeared to be very good lately with regards to the people that he's associated himself with. I know a lot of people do like backyard breaks because that's who I'm alluding to here. You know, they are young kids. They've done some bad things, but they've also done a lot of good things. But at the same time, it's like, I just don't think that's who Josh should have associated in the first place. I've touched on that in the past. That, let's ignore that point for now, but it's just interesting to see what this new CEO is actually going to do for, Net, for Fanatics because, you know, we haven't really heard a lot from them. Like, yes, they've done some stuff with their zero cool range, but we haven't heard a whole lot as to, you know, what their plans are going to be once they've got these licenses. And I think now that we've got a new CEO in place, we might start seeing some of this information, you know, um, just come out drip, drips and drabs, right? We need, we probably will start, you know, hearing more of their plan because yes, they don't take over for quite some time, but they're going to need to let the market know what the plans are, right? Because they need to apply comfort, confidence back into the market, things like that. So I'm curious to see whether this kick starts that or if it's going to be more silence from Fanatics until we actually need to hear from them. So take with that what you will, just sort of bring that to your attention. New CEO, hopefully it means something good. Now, Sports Card Radio have done a video, oops, sorry, have done a video and they highlighted a few things from Mark's cards where I think, you will be a bit surprised like I am too if you haven't seen this video already. So they, I think, read the bankruptcy documents or they had more information brought to them regarding Mark's cards. And what essentially happened was that a few days or a week or two before they filed for bankruptcy, they actually got a loan approved 
in the sum of about two to three hundred thousand dollars US, which is a crap ton of money, right? And there's a few questions here, right? And what sort of happened through the bankruptcy is that that money has been spent and it has gone missing. And they can't explain where the money's gone, right? So they've paid, they've apparently they've paid bills and that's where the money went. Something along those lines. But what's interesting here is two reasons. One, you know, that money got approved or that loan got approved by the bank only right before they went bankrupt, right? So the question should then go to the bank, what kind of credit checks did you do on these individuals to get comfort that, them, that they as a business were maintaining their going concern? If you don't know what the going concern is, it's a rule or a term we use in accounting because I work in external audit that you as a business have enough assets and like revenue coming in, things like that to keep your business running for at least the next 12 months. So the fact that a bank could approve that kind of money, right, just days and weeks before they went bankrupt is very, very fishy. And there's a point I want to get to on that in a second. But what has very likely happened for them to get that loan is they would have probably used the customer slabs as their inventory to give them, you know, they've got the assets in place. If those things can sell, then they're going to make their money back. Maybe some lies were told to the bank. I'm not putting words in people's mouths, but it's just a bit, which is very surreal how the bank could allow this to happen. If you're asking the question that you're, how can they have, you know, two, 300 grand, but then still be short to give, um, you know, customers their money back for the slabs as an example, or why can't they go after him for this money? Things like that. Why can't they go after him for the slabs that he owes or the money that he owes for the customers that paid for those slabs? Unfortunately, in business, and I say unfortunately in this instance, there's this thing called the corporate veil. And what the corporate veil basically means, if you own a business and it's set up as a corporation, it's essentially its own legal entity then, right? And what the corporate veil allows, when you've got a business at its own corporate entity, the business runs as its own like person. Think of it like a person, okay? Person. Now, what happens when they go bankrupt, as an example, the business goes bankrupt. So the creditors that are chasing their money can only go after the business. And once the business has no more assets, left to claim, then the creditors are out of luck, right? They can't get any money back. Because it's structured like that, the corporate veil protects the owners of the business from those creditors then going after them, okay? Which is why this is very interesting because the fact that this only happened days before they went bankrupt, it, you, you could argue that this money was taken from them, taken out of the business, paid towards, you know, anonymous bills or like random things that on paper look like they were meant to be what they were. And these owners have taken that money and now because it's in the business name they've paid for you know proper business service you can't reclaim that so sports card radio indicates here that they think maybe someone from mark's cards has taken the money run like that's a high possibility i don't want to put that out there because i don't want to get myself in trouble by making assumptions or anything like that but that's something that you, you'd expect if i was it me being an external auditor like i've touched on many times if i was to go into a business and see something like that that's probably where i'd go that's where my thinking would go right because it's just a bit crazy how the bank can give out that kind of money and then a couple of days later they go bankrupt and then they can't identify where that money was spent. And it just speaks to why some of these slabs are being claimed by the creditors because, you know, they were probably used as the assets to get the loan in the first place. So very disappointing from them. And it's just the story that keeps on going, right? And I'm sure Sports Card Radio are going to keep playing that video of Mojo Sports talking about how you've got to support Mugs Cars. They're a lovely business. They, they love each other, blah, blah, blah. Like it just shows that I've said it many times, the people you see on your screen, you don't know in person, you don't know what they're actually like. And this just is even more scumbag behavior from these individuals out at Mark's Cards. Very disappointing to see. And I just, I truly hope the people who lost their cards can at least get their slabs back or at the very least, you know, get their money back because it's, it's just very, very disappointing. So like I said, please share your thoughts down in the comments below in any of the videos. Please give me a thumbs up if you did like the video. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.